knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. In this series, we have examined every tier of the broad scale of ecology, and thus encountered a wide range of biodiversity. Biodiversity is all the different kinds of life that you will find in one area. It encompasses the variety of animals, plants, fungi, and microorganisms like bacteria. As we've been learning, each of these species and organisms work together in ecosystems, a complicated intertwined web that somehow has to maintain balance and support life. Biodiversity is essential for the processes that support life, even human life, though sometimes we like to think of ourselves as separate from the natural world. Without all the animals, plants, and bacteria, we would not have the ecosystems that provide us with the air we breathe and the food we eat. So what are some of the most serious threats to biodiversity that we need to be aware of? Habitat loss or destruction is the process by which a natural habitat becomes incapable of supporting its native species. The organisms that previously inhabited the area are displaced or dead, leading to a reduction in biodiversity and species abundance. While there are many causes of habitat loss, land conversion for development due to growing populations, along with mining for materials, harvesting lumber, and agriculture are at the top of the list. Loss of habitat can lead to the extinction of plants and animals. Habitat fragmentation is defined as the process by which a large expanse of habitat is transformed into a number of smaller patches of lesser total area, isolated from each other by a matrix of habitats unlike the original. In other words, habitats that were once continuous are now divided into separate fragments. This can happen when humans clear regions to build pasture or crop fields, and even the creation of hydroelectric reservoirs. Fragmentation can undermine the integrity of whole ecosystems by breaking up natural areas. Then there is habitat degradation. Pollution, invasive species, and disruption of ecosystem processes, such as the changing intensity of fires, are some of the ways that habitats can become degraded, no longer supporting native wildlife. Another example of this is streams being degraded by runoff of sediments and chemicals from adjacent cropland or factories, leading to changes in the aquatic ecosystem. An invasive species is an organism that is not indigenous or native to a particular area. While not all non-native species are invasive, the ones that are classified as such can cause great economic and environmental harm to an area. Some species may arrive in new areas through natural migration, perhaps prompted by changing temperature and precipitation conditions, but often they are introduced by the activities of other species. Why is this a problem? Invasive species are capable of causing extinctions in native plants and animals by outcompeting them for resources or preying on them incessantly. Their loss from the environment reduces biodiversity and may even alter the habitat, making it physically unsustainable for other species. Invasive species are among the leading threats to native wildlife. Another degradative phenomenon is acid rain or acid deposition, which is any form of precipitation with acidic components, like sulfuric or nitric acid, that falls to the ground. It can include rain, snow, fog, hail, or even dust. Acid rain can be extremely harmful to forests. The rain seeps into the ground, dissolving nutrients such as magnesium and calcium that the trees need to grow. Additionally, acid rain can cause aluminum to be released into the soil, making it difficult for trees to take up water. In aquatic environments, acid rain can cause phytoplankton to die. Insects, which rely on the phytoplankton for food, now have less food and they begin to die. Birds, reliant on insects for food, now also have less food, and so on, creating disturbances all the way up the food web. Next, climate change ecology is the study of the effects of anthropogenic, human-caused climate change on any aspect of ecology. This includes the effects of altered temperature and precipitation on the distribution, abundance, behavior, and physiology of populations and communities. In addition to altering plant communities, climate change likely will also disrupt the ecological balance between interdependent and often endangered plant and animal species. Biodiversity will be reduced, and Earth's water, energy, carbon, and other element cycles will be disrupted, leading to vast ecological stress. Climate change is one of the biggest threats that wildlife is facing. At what point is irreparable harm done? 
We will return to this very important question with more detail and potential solutions in the upcoming series on environmental science. In the meantime, conservation is the protection, preservation, management, or restoration of wildlife and natural resources such as forests and water. In situ conservation includes the conservation of habitats, species, and ecosystems where they naturally occur. Ex situ refers to the conservation of elements of biodiversity outside of the context of natural habitats. Examples of this include zoos and seed banks. Both of these types of conservation are important. Sometimes in situ conservation is not always possible as habitats are too degraded or there may be competition for land, meaning species need to be removed to save them. Orangutans in Indonesian rainforests are an example of this. Areas to conserve typically include hot spots of diversity and areas where there are threatened habitats or species which require restoration. Plants and animal species may be listed as endangered when in danger of extinction throughout all or a significant portion of its geographical range. Threatened means a species is likely to become endangered within the foreseeable future. Species become threatened or endangered for two main reasons, loss of habitat and the loss of genetic variation. Invasive species play a large role in threatening or endangering species as well, especially as native species may be much closer to adapting to new climatic conditions than the invasive species that replace them. Restoration ecology is the scientific study supporting the practice of renewing or restoring degraded, damaged, or destroyed ecosystems and habitats due to human activity. It is often the case that effective restoration requires an explicit goal or policy. These goals reflect societal choices from competing policy priorities, and it can be challenging to instigate any kind of action. Nevertheless, it is in our best interest to continue trying, as ecosystems provide us with food, fuel, and timber that we need to survive and thrive as a species. If we destroy it all, we destroy the ability to live in harmony with nature and to support our own human communities. Habitat losses and extinctions affect the entire planet, including us. Ecological restoration has many positives, the potential to improve air quality, reverse forest clearance and desertification, slow biodiversity loss, enhance urban environments, improve human livelihood, and perhaps, as a byproduct, improve humanity's relationship with nature to a place that is more harmonious for all other species and ourselves. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.